Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to be removing the tank from a GSXR Suzuki. Uh, it's a 1000. Same procedure applies for a 600 or a 750. It's in this one's an 02. It also will work for 01 or 03. Uh, we also disassemble the fuel pump and clean the fuel filter out. We also de rust the tank and put it all back together. And well, you'll have to wait and see if it works. But if it, you need to do any of those procedures, this is the video for you. Uh, I'll warn you right now, it is a little bit more, uh, it's a bit, little bit longer. It's pretty in depth. Um, depending on what time of the day it is, you either want a coffee or a beer. Uh, sit back and relax, okay? Enjoy the video and have a good one. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, today we are taking the tank off of the 2002 Jixxer 1000. Uh, this video is just coming off the tail end of my last video, which was completely removing all the fairings from the bike, like right from the front right to the uh, under underbelly from the tip for the tail section which was kind of tricky so if you're uh, tearing this bike down you can go ahead and click the uh, the link above I'll put a little note to the uh, the video it's kind of lengthy but it's a really good breakdown of how to get everything off all the electrical and you'll be pretty much left with just the tank the frame exhaust front forks you know and the tires but uh, today's video is pretty basic we're going to take the tank off I've got a bunch of rust in it and uh, the performance is good, like when I was test driving it, I didn't feel like there was uh, any sort of lag or uh, hesitation on the throttle. But I do want to change the, uh, the pickup filter on the uh, bottom of the pump. Just get it cleaned out. I, I'm, I'm sure it's probably like original or something. <laughs> Alright, so like I was saying, 10 mil for these top two bolts here. Now this. Oh yeah, it's pretty light. Should prop up, I don't know how this goes in. My first time doing this. Well, it's kind of sketchy, but. <laughs> you can tell I pretty much have never looked this thing up before. I don't know how to prop that up. That looks pretty much propped up to me. So let's have a look at the fuel pump here and how we get this, uh, this bad girl apart. All right, so it's a super tight squeeze in here, but I'm pretty sure I've got this um, this fuel line off. So, you know, I've heard this is pretty tricky, but I managed to get it pretty easy. Now you are gonna need, no, it's not off yet, but <laughs> you are gonna need a really small little uh, flathead. I don't know if you guys can see back in there, but back in here, there, it's like it's, it's a, uh, Threaded. So once I pinch these and pushed forward, I rotated this uh, kind of like connector. Now this fuel line looks like it's ready to pop off here. So might get a bit of a spill here. And, uh, shouldn't be too much though. Whatever's left in the pump, pretty much. Yeah, there we go. Let's just uh, pull that down past the tab. All right, so there's the two connectors off, and now I'm ready to remove the back bolt so we'll go up top and we'll we'll grab that all right well maybe I'm just a uh, maybe I'm just a linesman and I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to this stuff but I'm just rotating this uh, 10 mil bolt and it's it just keeps spinning in here so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the two 12 uh, 12 mil bolts here Put that zip tie off. Some of you guys have already done this, they're probably really laughing. There it goes. Yeah, it just pulls right off. You just gotta be a little persistent. Get your old man strength out or whatever you got. There you go. Yeah, so I just clued in. I've been shooting this whole video in 60 frames per second. <laughs> Which is totally not necessary, but whatever. 
It'll just look a little bit, the quality will just be a little bit down, no worries. So I want to flip this tank over, but I'm really worried it's going to spill fuel out the top because, uh, because this, um, let me get out of the way. Because this um, tank, uh, gas tank uh, cover here is real wobbly, so. It's good. So maybe it is good then. Maybe it's just rust from, from whatever. What I was worried about is the, uh, it was like, it didn't look like that rubber seal was seated right nice. So I was, I was thinking air was getting inside of the tank, but I mean, if I'm not leaking any fuel like that, I'd say she's pretty sealed. So I've got to go ahead, I'll get my bucket ready. I am going to drain the fuel into it and then uh, get out this pump here. All right, so I'm outside here in the lean to I'm trying to dispose of this stuff, you know, in an environmentally friendly way. So I got a little bit of a uh, towel, towel here in case I miss some. I don't want it leaking into the earth, but you know, worse things have happened, right? Let's be honest. So this will be messy for sure. Good enough for me. So, those got a bit wet. A lot more fuel in there than I thought. Okay, so I went ahead and I degreased the uh, tank, try to get all the fuel off of it. I don't want the only thing on this bike that's decent, the tank, to get <laughs> get all dickered. So I have my pail down there, just ready to uh, take the fuel as soon as I get this off. So these are Allen keys. I think they're oh, first try. Look at that. Any six? No, five millimeter. Okay. One, two, three, four. So yeah, there's five bolts here, five mil, like I said. Now this uh, fuel pump. Oh, there's a lot of crap in there. I'm just giving it a light wiggle as I pull it out. there all right so I thought I'd do a little handheld stuff here I'm gonna try and show you guys the inside of this tank oh, if I can get the damn camera to focus oh there we go oh yeah it's pretty nasty down in there autofocus doesn't want to cooperate but I mean, you get the picture, right? All right, so it's the next morning and I got to thinking, you know, famous last words. <laughs> um, you know, I'm gonna be putting all this vinegar and uh, bolts inside of the tank. Now, obviously I don't want the fuel pump in there when I do that, so I've got to block off this um, fuel pump hole, right? Otherwise, uh, you know, we're gonna have issues. Also, the uh, the vent on the back side of the tank also has to be uh, also has to be uh, closed up. So I went ahead and I just picked. I found a took the, took this off, and I uh, just cut a piece of a uh, plastic uh, lid off of a old uh, screw case. You know, you get like at Home Depot, or whatever, like deck screws. So. If this one here happens to be, I'm sure you can find something in your garage or even your kitchen, right? Just get something that fits roughly a little bit bigger. Just 
going to take the edges off and then you can place it over that and I'm hopefully I'm hoping we can just tape the piss out of it and it'll hold so I'm going to try that now I wish I had duct tape but all I got is this painter's tape and some I got some really sticky electrical tape I might try to throw on so let me go ahead and do that off camera I'm going to tape the hell out of this and then I'm going to, uh, I got two liters of vinegar that my wife discovered we have in the uh, laundry room. And then I'm going to dump it in and start uh, moving it around. I got 25 bolts. Show you these guys. They're actually, uh, it's a fairing bolt kit <laughs> from the, uh, from the Kawasaki. So they're all brand new bolts and uh, I got about 25 of them there I'm going to throw in. Um, because now I'm looking at it, it's not nearly as bad as some of the some of the rust uh, videos I've seen on the internet. So let me go ahead and uh, tape that on as good as I can, and we'll see how that works. All right. So the more that I'm uh, out here doing stuff, the more that I'm improvising. You know, it's 5 a.m. I don't have a uh, fluid transfer pump or siphon. I do have a long extension and some uh, rags. And take a look at some of the. Uh, the rust that's in the bottom of the uh, in the bottom of the tank there, just nasty. So I'm gonna do one more of those. It looks like, and I'll have the rest of the fuel out. You know, it never fails when you do something badass on camera. Not that this is really badass, but pretty sensitive stuff. And then uh, your battery dies mid-shot, and you lose your footage. Um, so what happened was I filled the uh, tank up with uh, 20 volts these little fairing bolts. I've got my painter's tape, electrical tape, and my little uh, homemade cover blocking this uh, inlet here. I also taped up the um, airline, or the overflow rather. And yeah, so I poured my uh, roughly two liters of vinegar in and now I'm gonna take the hell out of the tank. start breaking up all the, uh, or the uh, rust. So I'm going to do that for a few hours and we'll drain her out and have a look at it. All right, so while I'm waiting for the uh, vinegar to do its thing, I thought I would come over here and start uh, just taking this pump apart. So just uh, get a rag ready. There is going to be fuel left in the uh, in the pump. Now I've never done this before and I'm sure there's probably guys watching that are going to be laughing but I'm going to take a picture of this bad girl for my own references in case I can't get her back together and I suggest you do too. <laughs> she looks complicated. I mean well really there's three wires here. I think I'll label those. Um, there's a Phillips uh, nut there that kind of holds this um, bracket to this bracket bolted right through so I know that's got to go and then there's another uh, little allen right there and it's kind of the same idea it's got a power cord it's, I imagine it's a ground and it's bonding this ground here to this this pump inside here yeah positive negative so something's going on there anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and take those apart let me just get my tools here all right so same idea this is a uh, Phillips here. This is another four mil, three mil on this side. Okay, there's a little itty bitty washer on that one, okay? Don't lose it. The wire's off, but I got this clip. So I'm going to take the clip off. Put it with, I'm gonna put it right back in the, uh, with the bolt. Can't lose her. I'm still gonna manage to lose it. Just like that, those two are there. I'll get a Sharpie, I'm gonna label them. One, two, three, and I'll label the wires on the back side too. Or I'll just put a line through one, two, three. Okay, so I'm searching all over for the world's smallest wrenches, and it looks like it's either going to be a 7 or a 6 millimeter. But, unfortunately, it's still stupid early, so I've got an 8, 
which just barely grabs. It grabs enough to get them off. So I'm going to take this apart and then I'm going to run to the uh, store when it opens and grab the right wrench to put it back together. All right, well, I can get them off. Getting them back on with the right torque is probably not going to happen until I get my... Like, they're so small. And you can't get a socket in there, of course. But we don't give up, eh? Just keep figuring out ways. Now, these got a whole series of washers, so it goes world's smallest nut, a locking washer, a connector, and then a uh, star washer, we'll call it. Star washers underneath. Man, do not lose any of this stuff. You could you could sneeze and lose everything on the bench here. I'll try and zoom in a little bit, show you guys what's going on there. But you know, you got your three connectors. I mean, I got decently small fingers, but this is brutal. I can see why the shop, shops charge so much to get this stuff swapped out. Pretty much got to be a surgeon. Yeah, a little pair of needle nose definitely doesn't hurt. Okay, that's those three off. That's off. All right, so like I said, I got those Two screws there. Oh, she's really pissing fuel out now. I wonder why I had this rotated every which way. Definitely some nasty looking, nasty looking fuel coming out of there. Okay, I'm gonna try and just take this out. Oh, oh I almost lost all my bolts. Holy moly. That was a near miss. Sweet Lord, baby Jesus. I'm going to take these right off the... No, I'm just going to put them there. But Either way, let's have a look at this. Oh my goodness. So, there's another clip that goes on this side here, okay? Don't lose that. But have a look at this filter. My goodness. It's uh, pretty amazing this thing even ran. Like, look at that. Holy Christ. I don't like to swear when the Lord is using the Lord's name, but I'm just kidding. I'm not religious at all. There, I'll show you guys the inside of where the fuel gets picked up. That is crazy. Okay, so let's say there's a couple clips down here we can take off. And I believe this whole assembly is a, uh, this whole assembly just comes off all as one. Like this plastic with the clips, it's part of the filter. All right, so then you got a grommet here on this uh, piece of plastic. And that fits right over there. So I don't want to mess with that too much. Yeah, I'll leave that like that. And this bad girl here, she's got to go. You know, I ran the bike. I thought it was running good, but let's be honest. Okay, yeah, so I just pulled this clip back and I'm able to, uh, it was running good. Have a look at this. My God. Well, if it was running good before, it's gonna be running much better after I give this a good cleaning. 
So like I was saying, I don't have another um, filter. I mean, I was not really prepared. I kind of had some time on the weekend, so I thought I would uh, start this project. And I cleaned the filter pretty good. So the bike was running, to my knowledge, pretty much fine. So I just took that outside in the, out, in the um, fuel and I just wished it around. I got quite a bit of the rust off. So I'm gonna go ahead and reuse this. I know it's frowned upon, but you should definitely go and get a new one. I just wanna get this thing back together, you know what I mean? All right, so I'm getting ready to put this back together and I thought I would just quickly show you guys before I got too carried away. So you just take the filter, you plug it in onto the, uh, the pump like that, push it down, and then take that uh, grommet, sandwich it between the plastic with the clips, and you just clip her on there and she's on nice and tight. This kind of sits on top of the filter, so you slide that in like that, and I think, carefully, she should go on there. Or it might come this way. Yeah, sorry, reversed. So it's on like that. Everything kind of clips together. So, like I said, I should definitely have uh, ordered one of these ahead of time, but this is more like a preventative maintenance kind of thing. So I might do this like every couple years, just take it apart, maybe change the filter. It's really not too bad. Um, oh, I shouldn't say that. I'm not done yet. <laughs> I cleaned the inside here. I took my wire brush. I ran around the uh, outside where the seal is going to go. And yeah, I'm ready to slide this bad boy all back together here. Just gotta make sure I you line these tabs up. One. There you go. Start with the big one. Get that in there. And you should be able to wiggle this down into. Now it should pop in there. There we go. Yeah, it feels like a nice good seal there. Got my wires. And I'm ready to put her back together. <clears throat> All right, so I just ran into a little issue. I went ahead and uh, tightened my three bolts up here, nuts rather, tighten this one up. And this one here where this line goes, um, you know, it's gotta get tucked. It looks like it's gotta get tucked in behind because now when it's underneath here, you won't be able to get this washer underneath it'll pinch this uh, wire and you, we don't want any problems later so I would suggest you put that one in first and then because when you slide this pump back together you got to make sure that's on the right way That comes off, so yeah, we just tuck that wire down in there, and that frees up this little area here. I mean, it's jammed in between there, but at least now you can get, <clears throat> should be able to get this nut on. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, so this little, I don't know if that's a float or what that is, but you can kind of rotate that and line it up. Get your clip in there. Yeah, I still can't seem to get that. I think this clip just sits underneath this one and then they, these sandwich in. That seems to be the only way I can get it. So let's hope that is a good enough uh, ground or whatever this Looks like kind of like a bond screw here. Yeah, that's not bad. Bingo. Just make sure you got enough slack in that wire. All right, I pulled a little bit extra through, so should be good. Okay, so then yeah, go ahead and put the uh, clip on there, bolt that on, and then one, two, three. Okay, so I've got my pump reassembled and it should work. I'm 99% sure it will. <laughs> um, 
Sorry, it reeks like vinegar over here. Um, I'm ready to pour my vinegar out with my hopefully 20 volts come out with, uh, with the vinegar. I'm gonna take all the tape off here. <laughs> my daughter's going for a rip here on her uh, frozen mobile. What is that, a little, it's like a little trite thing. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna take this apart, drain everything, I'm gonna put the pump back in. I'm gonna actually use a two-stroke uh, fuel. Uh, I was reading online, I saw a video actually of a guy, he suggested doing it, and I kinda tend to agree with him with uh, the oil coating the inside of the tank, and then I'll, I'll rinse that out in the bucket as well, and then I'll fill her up a premium. And that should be good, I think. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I only let this sit for about three or four hours. So I don't expect a bunch to come out, but here goes nothing. Oh yeah. Okay, so I just realized this, but there's actually a lip in here. So I don't think I'm gonna get any bolts coming out of that side. I'm probably better off to uh, get the uh, key and open the uh, the other side, but I'll show you this water. It's looking nasty, Jesus. I'll set that down there. Like I said earlier, I'm definitely learning lots. I went to the hardware store, picked up a siphon uh, to get the last bit of fuel out of here, and also picked up a magnetic uh, stick so I could uh, get the bolt out of here easier because there's basically a lip. I'm just siphoning this into a uh, measuring cup. Definitely a lot of crap in there. Yeah, I can tell this has worked pretty good. All right. That's pretty much all I need out of there. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but you know, she's pretty nasty. Now I'm gonna use the magnetic uh, stick. This one's a little bit more money. It's got a claw built into it. So, I'll save you the embarrassment of watching me fish these out. And I'll try and shoot for 20. And uh, yeah, I'll go from there. Okay, so now I'm, I've got like 99% of my vinegar out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and put the pump back in. It only goes in one way. Yeah, there it is. So this is flipped around, the connectors are on that side. Uh, I got my bolts out, I'm ready to put my uh, pump in. While I was out at the hardware store, I picked up a seven millimeter, it was actually a little set, goes right down the four millimeter, um, open wrench uh, set, and it's a seven millimeter to get those little nuts off for the fuel pump. And then you'll be able to tighten those up. I just gave them a little bit more of a, a little bit more of an oomph. Okay, so I cleaned the surface on the uh, pump housing with the, uh, there's an O-ring there. Just to kind of keep things nice and uh, clean. If you get any rust or anything in between the seal and the pump, you're, and the tank rather, you're likely gonna end up um, with a small leak. You don't want that. That's no good. Now I'm kind of thinking you should torque these, uh, Kind of like opposites. Now I'm going to be taking this off one more time. What I'm going to do right now is fill this up with a two-stroke uh, fuel. Not fill it up, I get it half full. And then I'm going to uh, empty that out. And then fill it up with regular gas. And hopefully she fires up. <laughs> All right, so I rinsed out all my uh, two-stroke uh, fuel, and I actually ended up getting a lot more rust out as well. 
And now, it, uh, I discovered, unfortunately, <laughs> all along I thought it was this gas cap, and I was right. When I started flipping the two-stroke oil over, this gas cap started uh, leaking a lot. And then the thing fell right off at the hinges. It's broken, it's rusted out. So, you know, I'm pretty much hooped. My only option right now is to put this back on and um, put this back on, fill it right to the brim with uh, fuel, and then change out the uh, gas cap because it's obviously uh, it's not sealing anymore. So let's go ahead and do that now. I got the tank pretty much cleaned off here. We'll get it set up on the bike and reassemble it. All right, so I got my uh, two 10, 10 millimeter bolts that hold the uh, flange on there. I've got my kickstand already in the uh, triple tree there. And it's empty now, so it really shouldn't be too bad. Just gonna do one of these. And kind of rest it on the subframe here. Get my two bolts ready. Well, it's gonna be tricky. You probably won't be able to see very well here, but. As soon as you get one started, it should be a lot easier. All right, so I went ahead, it's uh, the 12 millimeter to put those back on. I got them mixed up there. So we'll go ahead, do the reversed order. I'll put my power cable back on. Clipped in, no issues. Unfortunately, I couldn't get that on video, but I more or less just took the clips, pushed it in, and it popped. I gave it a little wiggle and a tug. Bob's your uncle, marries your aunt. So we'll put the uh, tank down, and I will fill it up with uh, premium. I think what I'll do too is I'll add some fuel stabilizer in too, just for. It might be a couple months before I get after this. Alrighty, yeah. 20 liter jerry can. I mean, theoretically, I can just fill this right up to the brim and then I'm gonna change out the gas cap, which is no big deal. I'm just gonna go with one of those race uh, vortex style that don't need a key. Just change it right over. You know, when you're doing this, you can kind of take the cleaning as far as you want. I only want like three to four hours of the, you know, the bolts and the vinegar. And I got decent results, but I guarantee you if you went the whole day, the whole day, you'd, uh, you'd be laughing. All right, what I think I might do is hook the battery up quickly. I've, uh, I've separated all the wires from the back side. I just want to see if it fires up. <laughs> I can hear the pump going, which is a good thing. I'll prime it a few times. It looks good. All right, guys, I thought I'd get out of the garage for a little bit here and just do a little recap at the end. Um, fumes are really starting to get to me there, <laughs> even with the door open. So, you know, pretty much we propped the tank up. We used the uh, prop stick there in the triple tree. Disconnected the power, disconnected the fuel. Just uh, pulled the uh, fuel pump out. We drained all the fuel out of it. I disassembled the pump. I cleaned the filter out, which was just nasty. I went ahead and uh, built my homemade little um, cover for the fuel pump and uh, added about a, two liters of vinegar anyways. I probably could have added more, I would say probably four liters. I added about 20 bolts. I did get 20 bolts back, thank God. <laughs> Shook the hell out of it for about three to four hours. Um, that really broke up a lot of the rust. If I could do it all over again, I probably would have just left it for the day, filled it up like three quarters full, and just shook it you know, every few hours. And I would have got much better results. But for me, like this is something I'm gonna do probably every year as maintenance, just get the filter cleaned out. Um, so yeah, I put the filter back together. I used the same actual, uh, I put the pump back together. I used the same filter, cleaned it out. Um, next year I'll change it. Uh, it looks pretty clean though. And I uh, put it back in, 
I used two stroke oil to kind of clean out all the vinegar and um, that actually kind of helped break up a little bit of the rust as well and then uh, yeah I siphoned the last little bit out I had to go buy a siphon a magnet and a seven millimeter open wrench to get those little tiny nuts on the pump so don't forget that okay um, took all that out put it back in discovered that my fuel cap is leaking and air is getting in so that's always fun Put, put it back on the bike, I filled it right up with uh, fuel right to the brim and I was able to get the bike running, idling, I, I let it idle for about 15 minutes in the garage there and it um, seems to be working. I can kind of notice like the throttle, I cracked it a few times and it is super responsive now like there's uh, no question it was uh, you know at least partially blocked up. So yeah it's much much better than it was before. If this video helped you guys out maybe hit the like and subscribe button. If you got a Gixxer 1000, like an old K2 or a 2001 or an 03, um, or any of the other smaller bikes, 600 or 750s, consider subscribing. I'm going to be taking this bike right apart, you know, doing all the fairings up, new windscreen, fork seals are going to be getting changed right away. I think I'm going to try and do them myself. I'm going to go buy the uh, two inch inside diameter pipe with the threaded rod so I can uh, cage the uh, bushing to get at the uh, jam nut. Take the whole thing apart, change the oils, the seals, the dust caps, and uh, yeah, other than that, we're, we're, mo we're moving our way on down the list. It's a pretty lengthy list of repairs for this little project bike, but we're going to get her, and I'm learning just like you guys are, so, you know, don't be afraid to work on your own stuff. You know, the worst thing that happens is the pump don't work, and you got to take it apart and figure out what you did wrong, so <laughs> if you follow the video, you'll be just fine, and uh, other than that, yeah, I'm going to get a cold beer and uh, enjoy the rest of my Sunday. Take care, guys.